Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Chatty C R C and today we're going to take a look at how I have my Helio RC flight controller configured and just go over a couple more things if you are getting this or if you're thinking about getting it. Show you that it really is easy to get up in the air and we'll just kind of go through some of the values and all that kind of stuff real quick. So the first thing you're going to need is, of course, the Butterfly Configurator. Uh, now this week we are on 10.2 and this is the latest configurator that they have. And I've got the quad hooked up here, the Martian that everybody knows and sees about in the videos. And first thing we're going to need to do is you're going to want to go to HelioRC.com Helio and you're going to want to download or keep on your screen or whatever the, the wiring diagram. Again, this thing is super simple to wire. You do need a PDB uh, to power your ESCs and your VTX. Well, actually, you just power your ESCs and put a battery lead on there and you know, all of us have pretty much VTXs now and everything that run off VBAT. So a couple things on the VBAT, maybe a couple caps if you want to on your VBAT leads. And you just need one cable to go right here to the VBAT uh, power in and ground. And that is it. So just a pair of wires right there coming off of a basic power distribution board, whatever doesn't need any regulation or filtering or, or anything, but most of us pick up a Maytech. You can get them for like eight to 12 bucks now. No big deal. So let's just say that you got everything wired up. Standard motor configuration is all good. Free sky stuff is going to go up here on UR2. Then of course you've got a couple more URs back here for whatever else you want, whether you want to go with crossfire if you want to add GPS, anything like that at all. Doesn't come with a wiring harness for a 4 in one ESC. You can purchase them um, and make them work. I believe it's like an 8-pin. So while you're here, you are going to want to download the current hex file for... But for so while you're here, you're going to want to download the current hex file. And you can see there is a couple different versions of it. There's also a Betaflight version. So you don't have to flash and use the Butterfly Configurator if you don't want to. They're just kind of working together on this um, to help each other launch their products and everything like that. Plus, this flight controller is capable of doing things that Butterfly wants to do in the future. So once you download this, this is kind of something different for some of you guys. You know, you're not going to like go into the usual firmware thing, and I'll show you that. So typically, you know, when we go to flash a firmware, we uh, go ahead and look for our flight controller, which is right here. And then we would choose the stable release or unstable release that we want to test. We would click load firm firmware online or whatever. What you're going to do here is you're going to click load from our local and wherever you downloaded that to, that's where you're going to load it from and then you are going to flash it. So when you connect up and you flash it, everything is pretty much your standard fare. You're going to calibrate your accelerometer, that kind of stuff. When you go to ports, your ports are automatically going to be set up for FreeSky. So this will already be checked for serial rx and when you go into the configuration it will already have things like all of your loop times and enabling the sampling mode and stuff turned on it will automatically have sbus selected it'll have all of the features that you need turned on here already um, you basically just need to decide if you're going to be running multi-shot or if you're going to be running uh, d-shot protocol I'm running multi-shot because it's what I had, and I sometimes you hear that there's benefits, sometimes you hear that there isn't. Right now, I'm pretty happy with the way it's flying, so that's what I'm going to do. Interesting, first thing to look at, differences. Dynamic filter is turned off. That is because we are going to be using the onboard filtering 
in the processor itself, the first processor, and we are also using way different kind of filtering math and everything. So we're getting into the realm now where we're not just going to be changing PIDs and cutoff frequencies to tune stuff. We're actually going to be tuning certain filters and filter strengths at specific axis to make things even more locked in. So that is just how crazy technology is evolving here. So power and battery, of course, onboard ADC. We got our fail safe and all that kind of stuff. And then you're gonna to wanna to go into your receiver, set up your receiver as you normally would. Uh, modes, gonna set that up as you normally would. Um, OSD, same thing. You can see it even says uh, Betaflight here because this is all open source. They're pulling in Betaflight code and they are working on that as well. Um, to you know improve it so and they're sharing that stuff back to the community so it's completely open source and it's going to be up to Betaflight whether they want to adopt some of this stuff or if anybody that makes Betaflight boards wants to start adopting some of this technology black box CLI which is like super important so once you get all of that receiver stuff and everything set up and running you're going to go into the CLI, and if we go back to the website and the documentation here, it is going to tell you that the first thing that you need to do is you need to do this IMU update command line. And after you do that, it is going to set all of your the tested standard variables for right now that have been given people the best kind of flight. By the way, look, Stellarometer on, all that stuff, 14% CP load. Totally awesome. So once you have that done and it reboots and everything, we'll go back into the CLI here and I will sh copy and paste this and show you. So this is where you can see all of the different extra little tuning features that we're gonna have. And it's going to give you, you know, your actual ranges and what your settings are. So pitch Q, pitch R, roll Q, roll R, yaw Q, yaw R, uh, pitch cutoff frequency, roll cutoff frequency, yaw cutoff frequency, and then their internal dynamic gain. And of course, these are all values that eventually they want all of this to be completely self updated because there is enough processor power to run something like an auto tune type of feature in this eventually so I'm sure it's gonna take us a while but we'll get there so if we connect back up and go into pit tuning all of this stuff pretty much came preset the way that this is the this is their dump. This is what I have thrown in there. I have made some changes to it. I have lowered anti gravity uh, threshold to three. I've turned on VBAT compensation, and right now just uh, ten on TPA. I thought I lowered my D's, but I guess I didn't. I did change my rates around a little bit, so I've got some some work to do on this. But so far, I am super happy with the way it flies. Uh, most important thing is here is look at the filtering. So, you know, they're running technically by quad because it is going to be like a two stage filter with all that stuff that's running in the back. So, you know, you don't need to go through and click on dynamic filter and turn this to PT1 and start turning all this stuff off. All of that stuff is done when you enter that CLI command. So it's done. Don't touch it. Don't mess with any of this stuff. Now you're straight on to like tuning your PIDs. So once you get that all done, you're happy with the way everything is, then you can go and you can start doing your test flights and see how everything goes, work on your rates, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually you can get into your actual filter tuning. And this is kind of where things start to branch off because we're not just messing with tuning the actual PIDs anymore, which by the way, your PIDs are going to be like cut in half. 
Um, that's for sure, because the gyro is isolated behind hardware and software, so it is getting a true PID. So, you know, you're not going to have like 60 and 70 P's and 30 and 40 um, D gains, even though mine were 35. They all can be lowered down, and it will tell you that pretty much down here at the bottom, um, They because they become more aggressive because they're not being like hammered by noise anymore. So I encourage everybody to kind of like watch through these videos and obviously the more this is out there, the better tutorials there's going to be as far as like how to tune this stuff. But right now I am pretty happy with the way that everything is working on the actual base setup itself. So you definitely want to watch through these videos and kind of go with what they say. You know, look, we can click on one right here real quick and if we look at get off there you know if we look at their actual uh, rates that they're flying their pids that they're flying on here you can see that they have you know anti-gravity set way down um, they've got different uh, ratios and stuff going on but the the pids are totally crazy like 8 on roll D and 10 on pitch D 37 37 and you know, you can see just how awesome this thing here is flying. And they're trying to show you like little bobbles and stuff, how you can actually filter that out. So some people will call it prop wash. Some people will call it whatever, but they're little bobbles that you can tune out. And it gives you little helpful hints right here on what happens when you raise certain values. So our frequency filters really are going to just tell us how it'll make it feel more responsive to us so it tells you the, you know what the defaults are on everything but it will tell you that like when you start changing these how it's actually going to affect how the quad feels so that's basically what your cutoff uh, frequency settings are going to be and then it kind of like TPA except not uh, this is the dynamic gain value and this will actually let you adjust that and clean up things like different oscillations at high throttle or mid throttle or whatever. And you can go ahead and watch through the videos and they show you through the changes and step things through. Real nice, no problem. Then they show you down here basically the ultimate setup. So this would be like brand new Primo type of stuff where you have just a smooth running quad, no noise. They are basically telling you that you can set your dynamic gain at zero, and that is just going to make everything just perfect. And this is also running default everything in this video, so pretty awesome. And then, of course, they go over pit tuning down here. So obviously, you're going to get everything in the air before you even start tackling any of this stuff. Everybody's probably going to start messing with PIDs first. That's what the route I'm going right now. I'm just going to tune my PIDs and my rates and see how things feel. And then I, from there, will be going into the Slack and into the Facebook groups and start asking questions and see if posting footage and black box and see what I can do to make this thing fly even, be even better. And of course, there's going to be tons of different firmware updates and everything between now and then, different configurator type of stuff. So, you know, we're in for a quite a ride with this flight controller and the Butterfly software. So that's it, guys. That is basically how you get this thing set up and running. You really don't have to do anything. It is all built into that hex. Just go out, fly, maybe make a couple changes here if you want to. And that's it. So we will see you on the next video.